If your car system uses a PFI type of fuel injection system, whether it is MPFI or SFI type, it doesn't matter, because the fuel delivery system basic operation will always work the same. And the fuel delivery system has two types, which are the return type and the returnless type. This is Borneo Ignition, let's break it down. So I assume that you may be wondering what are the system anyway and why is it so confusing. Alright, basically the fuel delivery system has two types, the return type and the returnless types of fuel system. Okay, the return type fuel delivery system basically works in a loop because it has a return line to the fuel tank. So when the fuel is being delivered, it will go on to the fuel rail. And then the fuel is regulated by a component called fuel pressure regulator, which usually mounted near the fuel rail. It is to control the fuel so it won't be delivering too much or too little fuel. During the idle, where the vacuum is high, the regulator lowers the fuel pressure because the engine needs less fuel. And during high load or when we are accelerating or pressing the throttle pedal, the vacuum is low. This is because we are letting more air coming in because we are pressing down the throttle pedal. This causes the regulator to increase the fuel pressure to provide more fuel for combustion. However, there will always be an excess fuel delivered to the injector because we cannot control the correct amount of fuel to be injected. So the excess fuel will be sent back to the fuel tank through the fuel lines from the fuel pressure regulator. So the excess fuel is returned to the fuel tank through one of the check valve or pressure regulator mounted inside the fuel tank and it is integrated as one unit with the fuel pump assembly. Alright, one of the major best thing about this system is that it has better adaptability meaning it can be modified for a higher fuel flow requirement. It means that we can adjust the fuel to be injected more. And the next best thing about this type is that it can maintain a consistent fuel pressure. However, there are downsides for this type. One of the major downsides for this type of system is that it carries heat from the high pressure pumping from the engine component such as the injector and a fuel rail to the fuel tank. So when this happens, it will create a vapor lock in the fuel lines and it will cause the fuel flow to be blocked by vapor bubbles. And not only that, it will also cause emission increase caused by evaporation process in the tank. But most modern cars have much better system to control this problem. Alright, so for the returnless fuel system, it has a quite different technique to control the fuel delivery system. It works in one way, okay? It has no return line and the fuel is constantly being delivered to the fuel rail and injector. So how does it control the fuel pressure? Alright, the way returnless type control the fuel pressure is electronically. It uses the fuel pressure sensor, which usually located outside the fuel tank, to provide the data to the ECU. The ECU then sends the data to the fuel pressure regulator which is mounted inside the fuel tank to act like an actuator. So it will control the amount of pressure to be released and to be pumped to the fuel rail. So the excess fuel return will only happen inside the fuel tank because the fuel regulator is mounted and mostly integrated with the fuel pump assembly as one unit. Okay, so what's good about this system anyway? Okay, one of the major advantage for this system is that no hot fuel is returned to the fuel tank, meaning less heat is transferred to the fuel tank, so it less emission issue. Okay, number two, since the ECU is controlling the pump speed, it generally reduces the unnecessary fuel circulation, meaning less fuel consumption than the return type. But how about the downside? Well, it is expensive to repair because the fuel pressure regulator is built inside the fuel pump module and we usually need to replace the entire fuel pump unit and then when it comes to diagnose and troubleshooting we cannot manually check the fuel pressure at the rail like the return type instead we need a scan tool to diagnose the problem related to these types of system all right so yeah there you go now that you understand both of these system works and what's good and bad about these two types so I hope that you would get something from this explanation. And if you have any question, please feel free to ask, comment in the section below. I will try my best to help. And yeah, I see you on the next video.